What's up, Simonics? Welcome to a new vlog episode and welcome to our kinda monthly Ionic news flash. Actually, I'm always surprised how much is going on, so I hope this news flash helps you to stay up to date with all the Ionic news, uh, the news about the latest content, and everything that's going on because it looks like Angular lately became kinda religion. As usual, we will go through all the new content and tutorials, videos I got going on. We go through the Ionic releases. Um, any news around Ionic and of course everything else that's going on in the community. So let's dive into it. Alright, let's start with a quick in case you missed it. Last week I released my book Practical Ionic. You can still get it, of course. You can also get it next week and the week after. It's available at fdectic.com Practical Ionic. It's a book in which we will build one application but with a lot of functionalities. So this is a book on building a real world application including a lot of functionalities using Capacitor, Firebase. Um, check out the page for all the information. You can also get uh, a free preview if you want to. All the content is explained, uh, all the bonus templates that you can get. Uh, and yes, get it on my page if you want to support me. now. Onto the content, as you can see, we got quite a lot of things. Uh, let's quickly go through them. Actually, we didn't have this show for two months, so there are two new courses inside the Ionic Academy. Number one is uh, Ionic Everywhere. I made a course on uh, how you can actually build good Ionic web applications because the standard UI is more targeted towards mobile. That's just a effect. But with a bit of CSS, some additional tricks, uh, using the tools you got available, you can actually build a really cool website with Ionic. In this course, we will also get into server-side rendering and pre-rendering again and hosting your application. So I really enjoyed the material of this course. The second new course is Mastering Ionic Styling because still a lot of developers have problems to completely style their Ionic applications in the way they want to. Um, they have problems with the shadow uh, web components, um, the shadow DOM, the CSS variables and in this course I will explain everything around that topic so you can really um, build the application just like you want to. In terms of new content, in case you missed it as well, uh, on the Ionic Academy, about four new quick wins. One about using capacitor share with Ionic, um, just a quick explanation of how everything works. Um, then we also got a big Ionic debugging guide, I'm really proud about this. Um, since I found debugging not too easy, but it can actually save you a lot of time. So within this guide, uh, there's explanation how to debug on the web, but also how to debug files, how to use Visual Studio debugging, on-device debugging, uh, really great guide, I think. Also, uh, another guide on creating PDF files, um, that has been requested in the past many times, so a new guide using PDF Make and Capacitor to create PDFs right from your application. Then the latest new thing is a quick win on generating an Android bundle build because lately for some client projects I noticed that for Android you can or perhaps in the future should submit a bundle build which is a bit different from the regular APK. So within this quick win we dive into how to create it and how to test it on a device as well and what's the difference to your previous APK. Now, on the DevDectic blog, a new post on Ionic Calendar. Uh, Calendar has always been a very um, highly requested topic in the past because a calendar is really important in a lot of applications. It's not included in the core of Ionic, so I came up with um, this tutorial about using a standard calendar and also using it in a model and a bit of customization. Check it out if you want to add something like this to your app. Then another big guide, I actually created a lot of big guides in the last time, on push notifications with Ionic and Capacitor. Everything explained, including the Firebase setup, how to include the files, how to make everything work inside your Ionic application using Capacitor. And finally, um, another guide on server-side rendering. We talked about this in the past on the vlog as well. Um, it is a really interesting topic, there's still a lot of work to do, um, but this is, I would say, a very good starting point to use server-side rendering or pre-rendering with your Ionic application. That's 
everything from my side in terms of my new content. Now let's move on to Ionic. Um, from the Ionic blog, a very cool post from Brandy I highly enjoyed. Ionic now makes use of CSS shadow parts. If you don't know about it, well, you're just like me. Um, but after going through this post, you will understand. Basically, um, in the past, you had to use CSS variables for the web components. If the web component from Ionic for whatever didn't expose a property as a CSS variable, you basically couldn't override it. Now, with CSS shadow parts, um, Ionic actually um, marks different elements of their web components as a specific part and using a syntax like this uh, part placeholder you can inject standard CSS into the web component without the web component uh, having the need to expose these as a CSS variable. That means Ionic doesn't have to create uh, tons of CSS variables for each and every component, but they can simply declare different elements of the web component as a part and you can then style it from the outside, which of course makes it easier for Ionic and um, decreases the size. I don't know if they will remove the CSS variables, I guess they will just keep them. But I expect them not to add any new, but use this new um, style of targeting them. And for you, it's of course a lot easier um, now to completely style components and really to use every CSS property on a component. And that's also part of my mastering styling course in the academy lately. So great work, uh, great post by Brandy. As well, there's a post by Eric from the Ionic team, which I found kind of interesting about React Native or Ionic. You see this discussion a lot. Uh, usually React is always better because the performance is better, it's so much native and it's just wow. But there are a lot of other things that you have to uh, consider when choosing Ionic or React for your next project at your company. And Eric explains this very great. Um, perhaps his view now working for Ionic is also a bit tar <laughs> bit well, no, well, he's pretty much neutral, I would say. In the end, he also gives the recommendation uh, that both are great, um, a little metrics to uh, decide which framework to use. If you're thinking about this error or just want to have a bit more knowledge on the topic, go check it out, really a great post. And then I also found something from Cecilia, which I think was in the Ionic Conf uh, and also in the Q&A session with me, um, I think so, uh, about Cypress testing of your Ionic application. Uh, you can look it up on the Cypress blog. I also want to make a tutorial or course, perhaps even a course for the Academy over the next time on Cypress testing because I really enjoyed her talk and I think um, there's not too much about testing yet. And Cypress uh, looks like the future of testing for our application. So I will definitely get more into this over the next time. Now on to a bit of social media uh, discoveries. What I noticed, um, Ionic is making a lot of progress on Vue. That is great news if you want to see Ionic Vue. Uh, expect to hear more soon. They haven't revealed any date for Ionic Vue, but I'm really looking forward to that release. Uh, maybe I will actually check out Vue over the next time just to be a bit prepared. Um, I really, I, I didn't consider uh, getting into Ionic React yet, just because I, I just didn't want to. <laughs> but uh, Vue, uh, I really like the green color of Vue. That's that's the main reason I want to check out Vue. So. I'm looking forward to Ionic View, and you should follow this um, and hopefully we see something later this year. Now, um, Max Lynch, always a great source for everything, uh, all information around Ionic. Max checked out Phaser, which I also wanted to get into, perhaps also over the next time. Let me know if you're interested in anything related to Phaser. If you don't know it, Phaser is, uh, well, what it's called, an SDK or um, uh, framework for Canvas. Yeah, well, it's basically a framework for uh, developing these kind of games. And you can integrate this with Ionic and Capacitor. I think Josh Moroni in the past did a lot on Phaser. Uh, and I also wanted to check it out because 
I always said you can't do games with Ionic, but this is actually an approach to create games with Ionic. I think that's also highly interesting and interesting that Max was checking this out. Hmm. All right. Now, uh, a bit more marketing on Capacitor. Capacitor is really growing a lot. If you still think Capacitor is just a little thing, uh -uh, that's not right. Capacitor is really taking off. It's growing over time. Um, I use it for all my new apps and I heard from a lot of people who now use Capacitor and really love it. If you haven't done it, if you have old projects with Cordova and no budget for migration, that's fine. But please, for future projects, always consider Capacitor. I think the tooling and the future developments we will see on Capacitor are really worth investing time into it. And that brings us also to this little post where Max shared uh, the roadmap for Capacitor 3, which I was um, kind of happy about. Um, in terms of high level changes, they want to make Electron a community main pain platform, that makes sense. They will focus on iOS and Android, um, but really just a few people are using Electron. Uh, Electron and I think it's fine to give this back into the hands of the community. They are rethinking uh, the whole plugins. Um, there's a metrics already which plugin should be included, should be removed or moved just into a different package. So there's actually a lot going on. Then uh, one thing I'm highly or very excited about is running capacitor apps on your device directly from the CLI. This should be possible uh, given the native tooling and this would help so you don't even have to open Android Studio or Xcode to deploy on your app, uh, which would be really, really awesome. All right, that's the rough roadmap we saw here. Now, finally, um, there was a little, uh, well, discussion. No, I wouldn't call it discussion. Well, the hashtag I believe in Angular popped up and everyone was sharing why they believe in Angular and why Angular is great and what Angular helped them to become. And I didn't really get why people started to treat Angular like a religion suddenly. But if you dive into this, uh, you will find more articles on the struggles of the Angular team. I initially wanted to make a full episode on this, but I didn't want to make this too bad and um, well, in general, I'm not 100% informed about everything. So I read through this and a few posts. It looks like the Angular team um, doesn't have the best environment for people, I think. So a lot of people from the team left because they have a toxic environment. Besides that, um, there's a lot of things, uh, or there are a lot of things that Angular isn't taking care of properly lately. There are a lot of issues open. They focused on things that took way too long to ship, like Ivy. Um, they're rewriting stuff, but they're not making progress on really the important elements uh, that people need. So unresolved issues going up. Um, but, well, yeah, um, no public roadmap. So there's a lot of bad news about uh, Angular, but at the same time, you also don't really have to worry about it. It's still backed by Google. If Google wants, they can basically fire the whole team and get new engineers. It's actually said that you can uh, replace people that easy today, but in terms of company decisions about frameworks, I still think you're just fine with Angular and they will definitely support it and it will still be developed over the next time. But this also once again got me thinking that I'm kind of focused on Angular at the moment, um, like completely focused on Angular and that I might to switch to or uh, not switch but add something like Vue or React to my stack so in case um, at some point Angular uh, well won't be developed anymore although I can't really imagine this in the near future that I at least have something else going on. But once again, please don't take this as worry. Uh, read a bit about I believe in Angular, read the post from Jeff Cross and the other people who worked at Google at the Angular team and why they left and what is going on. So it's not like all hope is lost. But I don't want to close this episode with something bad. So let's quickly also check out the Ionic version. I really love how fast they pump out new versions. Currently we're at 5.3 Phosphorus. Uh, a lot of bug fixes and new features. I couldn't pick something very special from it, but I'm always happy to see new 
features and bug fixes at the same time added to it. Um, so as you can see, there's always going on a lot. If you want, you can always check it out on GitHub, the releases of Ionic. That's the current version and I think you need at least 5.2 or 5.3 for the new CSS shadow parts. So if you want to benefit from them, update your applications now. And I think you can also use Angular 10 already, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Please don't nail me on that. But that's so far for the Ionic news. All right, and that's it for today's Ionic News Flash. I hope you enjoyed the news. I'm actually kind of excited about uh, all the stuff going on about Capacitor over the next time, uh, the next releases, and also very interested in Ionic View because this might really be the thing I'm going to check out after using Ionic Angular for quite some time now. So check out my new book, Practical Ionic, once again, and then also hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I think it's actually on this side. And please let me know if there's anything that you would like to see over the next time in this vlog. You know, the Ionic tutorials happen on Tuesday, but in this format, I want to do something different. So I'm open for new topics, perhaps another q and if you get any questions or anything like this, leave a comment and I will definitely uh, think about it or maybe even create a video about it. So have a great week, enjoy some great Ionic coding, and then I will catch you next week. Like always, uh, happy coding. Simon.